Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here with the match preview for Match Day 2, Republic of Ireland versus Canada. And I'm joined by Republic of Ireland International, Neve Farley. Um, Neve, how are you? How's summer? And I suppose, how was Italy over the course of the year? Good, I'm good, thanks. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, Italy was it was good. It was a good experience um, over there. Um, and yeah, summer's been, summer's been good too, but I'm looking forward to getting back on now. Um, in the next few weeks. Yeah, well, um, I just I was thinking of people who to ask, uh, who might be around or whatever. And I know I spotted you at the the France game passing by. Um, yeah. And uh, I was like, actually, do you know what? Who'd be perfect just to get on? Who's been in and around the squad? Who knows the players very well? And it's kind of more of an Irish kind of look at things. So I suppose we know Canada. They're ranked seventh. They drew nil nil against Nigeria. We saw our girls in green uh, against Australia. I thought put in a fantastic performance what was your view on on the game um yeah likewise i think uh, i think every single one of the girls put in a great shift um against a, a very good australian australian squad um i think obviously there there was a few people talking saying that we didn't create enough and this that and the other but at the end of the day australia we're, we're a very good team and I think near the end the last 20-30 minutes I think with the likes of Abby Larkin and, and Lucy Quinn coming on we created more um, and yeah hopefully hopefully we can uh, we can push on against against Canada Yeah well that, uh, that's the aim I think you, you know you, you said there about the, the subs coming on I think obviously with the difference some of them made coming on I think they could be in line for a start like I wouldn't be surprised if Abby Larkin started but it, it will depend on whether Vera kind of goes with that defensive shape or not. Again, another one I think that could possibly start um, is he, is he Atkinson. I thought she's done well in, in recent games coming in there in that left wing back spot. And it could be a chance then to maybe push Katie up and make her a, a threat further up the pitch then. Yeah, I suppose that, that, that is an option for Vera. I'm no manager, by the way, so I ju I'm just thinking <laughs> of other ways to get her involved higher up. Yeah. For me personally, I think I don't think Fair will make any changes. I think uh I think like I said, Abby was brilliant when she came on. Um but then at the same time I don't think like Sinead Farley did did anything wrong either. She she put in a big shift. Um she I seen an interview she she was saying that she didn't think that she got on the ball as much as she'd like to, but like like you say, it's, we played uh, we're playing a defensive kind of way and trying to trying to catch the teams teams on the counter and I don't think I just can't see her changing much um, and having the likes of Abby on the bench to come on. Maybe she might bring her on earlier if we need a goal. Um, but yeah, I, also with the Katie thing, I can't see her playing um, higher up. Obviously, a lot of people would like it, but um, Canada do have a lot of threats. And then the likes of um, Jessie Fleming, rumour of her being back in, that's uh, not not good from our side of view. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think it'll stay the same. Yeah, well, we spoke with the Canadian fan channel at She Scores Bangers. Uh, she was saying that Jesse Fleming is likely to come back in for this game. She was rested for the Nigeria game and likely going to play uh, these two games. And then she was talking about um, Sinclair as well, who's a Chelsea just signed. Um, so she's going to be in there as well, who's going to be a threat, I think, on Katie's side of the pitch. So, um, yeah, I think what you're saying, it's right. Maybe it's wishful thinking on my end, but I think maybe... If we're looking at this one, and I, I mentioned already that Canada rank higher than Australia, so therefore in the rankings world, they're they're better. So you're probably looking at a, a defensive shape or defensive uh, formation once again. But I think um, the fact now that we may have a situation with Louise Quinn uh, being injured, I think she was absolutely colossal against Australia. She was absolutely brilliant. Her and Eve Fahey uh, and Megan, I suppose, as a back three, they were brilliant. Um and I think if, if Louise, I, I saw Vera said there's a slight chance that she, uh, she could still play. So I'd be hopeful that she does. But I think without Louise Quinn, we we could struggle, I think. Yeah, I think uh, I probably probably agree on that. Obviously, Louise is, is such a big player for us. Um, for me, looking in, I'm like, Louise is an absolute warrior. Like, I'd say she'd play with, like, one leg, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we'll obviously all have our fingers crossed. Um over today and, and tomorrow morning that, that Louise will be on the team sheet. But like you have the likes of Diane Caldwell that's there too. Like she's also an unbelievable centre back that can that can plot in and she's um she's experienced as well. So 
I think if we don't see Louise on the on the team sheet tomorrow, like we we don't have to worry too much. But yeah, obviously she's a huge, huge player for us, and it would uh, it would be great if if she if she's fit. Um, I do know there was rumors over uh, Heather Payne not training too, so she's also a huge player for us. Um, and please God, the both of them are just precautionary. Um, and they'll both play tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I think uh, Heather, she had a strap around her, her thigh, I think it was, um, or her quad maybe. Um, but Vera did say that the only concern that she had was uh, Louise, but she still said right. that she could still feature. Uh, that was out of the press conference, so you can take it that, uh, out of that what you will. Um, but I suppose you've, you've been in and around this squad now the last uh, two, three years, probably more, um, and you've seen us kind of coming up against bigger teams and, and getting results and digging in, as Irish teams tend to do, both male and female. Um, I think a lot of fans are expecting a, a really big performance and, and maybe an upset. Uh, maybe it's wishful thinking, I don't know, but we, we always kind of have that belief when we're at the big tournaments that the, the players will just find that extra bit uh, to keep going even if it's like 1-0 to Canada to the 90th minute and almost similar to, to Australia and we hang on for that draw and, and maybe get that goal in the last minute and then we're taking that draw into the Nigeria game and then hopefully have to win that game I, I think that's what a lot of people are kind of thinking of I don't think a lot of people actually have faith that we'll maybe win the game but a draw I think a lot of people w w would favour uh, taking that into the Nigeria game all going well yeah I think Obviously, I'm. I think we can we can get something off the game definitely. Um, like Canada are a very good team, and the girls will know that. But I think over the years, like especially since Vera's come in as well, like we've we've really gotten big results against uh, against the big nations like um, the likes of Sweden away and stuff like that. Um, like I I really hope that we can do we can do it. Um, but yeah, obviously it will be a tough task. But I think if we're set up the way we're usually set up in that defensive shape, um, I know obviously we need to get something from the game. That's that's obvious. Um, maybe we can then catch them on the counter. Can we get Katie that bit higher in the second half? Can we maybe get the likes of Abby Larkin doesn't start, get her on Lucy Quinn to create more and um, to cause them upsets? But I do know, uh, obviously, Jessie Fleming coming back in will obviously be a threat for us. She's very good in between the lines and stuff. But, like like I said, we're we're a compact team. We're hard to break down. We're aggressive, and I think I think that will um hopefully help us get over the line tomorrow. Yeah, I think that's that's what they were saying on the opposition preview is that you know Grosso, uh, she's just after winning Serie A player or midfielder of the year uh, over there, and she's another player that's going to be a threat. Then we've Sinclair, then you've um Jesse Fleming, as you say, who seems to be the big threat that everybody's worried about. Um the only thing that we maybe hope for is she's not going to be as sharp coming in, having not played, but I think she picked up a knock, a knock uh, earlier in the camp uh, when they first started training for the World Cup. So I think that's what her injury is. Um from, from what I heard anyway. I think they're the threats that we kind of like the midfield is probably where, where the game's going to be won and lost. But I think if we can sit in and not maybe give them much to kind of get at um, like we did against Australia, I don't like. I really don't remember much chances that we gave away against Australia. I know they had a couple of shots from distance, which Courtney had, you know, comfortably saved. But other than that, and the penalty, I, I don't really remember them having too many chances where you went, you know, we we're in real danger here. You know, we we seem to be very comfortable absorbing the pressure, and as you say, then at, at times carrying it on the the counter attack with Kira Carusa. Um, I remember there was one point where she knew, Kira, she she brought her right up to the edge of the box. I think Katie was making a sprint on the counter, and she oh, was she just missed her. she didn't even see her. No, no, yeah, and she, she just slides her, yeah. it into the left. Maybe we get a chance, and I think that's something that we, I suppose, as you said, on the counter, we'll be hopeful that we can be a bit more better in our decision making, uh, yeah. in in the final third. Yeah, I think so. And like you were saying there, um, Julia Grosso, she's a she's a great player. I've played against her uh, in Syria this year, and one thing I will say, like, she loves to run at people with the ball, but I'm like, if we are quite, like we usually are, compact, um, closing the gaps between the lines, she's not going to get that space. Um, so that would be, obviously, uh, I'd say in the Irish game plan, like I said, to to, to keep the shape, stay compact, and uh, stop the creating chances. I did see something um, during the week, 
that I think a lot of time for Canada haven't scored a goal from from play um in eight games or something. They're all from set pieces or something like that. So that's another thing. People are saying that we're struggling to score, but they're also struggling to score as well um from open play. So that's something that we can we can um bring into the game as well. Um but yeah I think I think for the girls as well, obviously the first game it's in Sydney, like it's a packed out stadium, um it's a big occasion and stuff like that. But to get that game over the line and to I know obviously the result wasn't what we wanted, but like you said, Australia didn't really create much. Yeah, we, we had that um the penalty and the mistake um from Shiva from for that, but other than that, I don't think they really threatened us. Um and I think they can take positives out of that hundred percent going into going into the game against Canada. Um so yeah, I I'm hoping for a, a good result. Yeah, well, I think that with the Australian thing, it's it's not that um, they didn't create much. We I don't think we allowed them to create much, you know, because we were doubling up yeah, on I Ford, agree. and uh, you know, we we were just limiting them to, to to very little, and it was all shots from distance, you know what I mean? Um, and again, we were just absorbing everything. And I think if if we can do that and just admit, as I say, a bit more um, quality. Um, and a bit more maybe composure in the final turn. And I'm not saying it's, that's going to be easy because a, a large part of the game, Kira Caruso is going to be running around on her own up, up there, and uh, especially if our team is deep. So it's not going to be easy for her to run at three, four players while trying to expect everybody else to kind of get forward with her. So it's it's going to be... I think I think we're going to just have to be uh, at our absolute best, um, 100% concentration for the whole game. And and hope that we're absolutely perfect. I think Vera's mentioned that before, um, just being absolutely perfect for the game. I think that's where we're going to have to be for this one, to, if we're going to try and get ourselves a result uh, more so. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree on that. Like, It's obviously such a big game. And like you said, like they're seventh in the world. They do bring bring a lot of quality. And it's just about us trying to kind of nullify, nullify what they can bring and try and get the likes of Katie McCabe, Denise O'Sullivan on the ball and try and create something with Caruso up there. Um, but like I said, I think I know there's pressure on this game too now because you know we have to get something from the game. But at least the girls have the experience of of the first game in Sydney. They know they can compete at this level. They're good enough. Um, we know Canada are a very good team and they're playing with big club, big clubs and stuff like that. But we also have like top class, like Kate McCabe, Denise O'Sullivan. They're world class. Then you have the likes of Louise Quinn in the back line. Um, and young players coming on like Abby Larkin then you have Lucy Quinn coming in like we do have talent and I think um, I think we can we can cause some problems and we showed even in the last 20-30 20, 20, minutes against Australia that we can we can cause problems I know we probably didn't have a, a clear cut full chance but um, like we can show that that we're a team and, and that we can create things well, I think, as you said, we had them on the back foot. Like, if anyone looked like they were going to get something from the, the end of the game or anyone looked like they were attacking, it was us. And as you said, uh, I think the occasion of having so many of the Irish fans there now, um, you know, you see, I, I saw so many of the girls posting how much the fans kind of spread them on. I'm hoping that's going to be the case again in Perth. Obviously, the the stadium's not going to be as big or anything like that. But the fact is, you know, they, they have that. They've played in front of that crowd now. So nothing really should... Uh, overall them too much in that respect and i think um with canada if we can raise our game which we've shown that we we can uh, and have in the past against uh, these bigger nations and i think and you'll probably agree with this is that we when we go into games as the underdogs when, when we're at our best i think both in male and female yeah i think so every irish team i think we thrive off being the underdogs and um i think the girls would well, me personally, I'd much prefer to go in as an underdog than uh, than not. So, um, yeah, I think as you said, every every Irish team kind of thrives off that, and I think sure we did it in Sydney, and like I said, I know we didn't get the result, but but we did. There was a performance there uh, to be proud of, and um, hopefully we can do the same against Canada and push that one step further and try and get a result. Well, if it makes you feel any better, well, I've been playing the FIFA series of the World Cup and I beat Canada 1-0. Katie McCabe scored. We beat them 1-0. And we're going into the <laughs> Nigeria game now. Uh, get to hopefully getting a win with that. But uh, usually what nice. I do towards the end is uh, I get a match uh, or like a, pre a score prediction 
So if you want, I'll go first, or you could go first, ladies first, uh, if you like. You go first, go on. I've gone already with a 1-1 draw. I can't change it now. I've, I went with that on the opposition preview. Just from listening to kind of the players who they have and stuff like that. I Here, listen. Yeah. I'd be absolutely delighted if we got the win. But uh, I'd take a 1-1 draw going into the Nigeria game, looking to try and win that win that one. Um, right. I'm going to go one step better. I'm going to go 1-0. Um, Louise Quinn, header. Okay. And so Louise yeah. Quinn plays for you then? Well, hopefully. I'm praying. That's yeah. uh um yeah, look if she uh it could go all all go out the window now tomorrow morning. She she won't be on the team, she and I won't my prediction be gone. But um yeah, I hope uh, I think like Katie's deliveries were excellent the other day, um, against Australia and I think that's we're all like obviously uh, all Irish teams, but especially this team is is a big threat with the likes of um Louise Quinn in the box and obviously when you have top class deliveries from from Katie and also Megan Connolly, we're always a threat. Um, and I think, I, I don't know how many corners we had against Australia the other day, but um, I'm hoping for one step better this this game against Canada and hopefully we can get the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, she's like our Shane Duffy for the female team. Yeah, exactly. Or John Egan now because he's scoring a lot of goals. But yeah, no, look, I, I would absolutely take any sort of result tomorrow. Um, I, just, I just hope we can avoid defeat. Because it'll be a real downer then going into the last game. But we won't think about that. Uh, we will hope for um, positive vibes. A uh, good result, as you say. And, and look, if it goes in any L way, I wouldn't care. Yeah, um, exactly. I'll take, I'll take an OG at this stage. Yes. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> we've seen that happen in the past for us. So, uh, yeah, but look, if Louise doesn't play, maybe Diane gets that goal. Or Clara exactly. Reardon, yeah. maybe. Or maybe an Amber Barrett to come on as well. Oh yeah, well, there's actually been a lot of talk of fans wanting her to come on for for the end of uh, the last game as well. So, be interested to see what way the the game pans out. How we're looking, maybe in the 60th minute, as you said before, um, Abby Larkin maybe coming on again to make a difference. Lucy Quinn, um, you know, we have players there that can come on and make a difference. And you, you know, um, I think you mentioned about Sinead Farley saying that she wanted to get involved a bit more as well. So, it'd be interested to see if you know. One moment, the magic might have us one nil up at, at one stage, and we've something to hold on to there. So we're 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 a hard team to break down when we go a goal up. So um, as you, as we've seen against Sweden in the past and Finland as well. So uh, we definitely um, are one hundred percent in with a chance of getting a result here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree, and I think we'll just have to be as diligent as as they always are. Um, just kind of as Vera always said she said in her interview there after after the game she said at half time that was uh, it was going to be a mistake so it's just like to keep keep on your toes um like you're playing at the highest level now so it's like it's every second counts and i think um to be honest with you i think i think they're going to they're going to really struggle to break us down um so if that's the case so we get a goal i don't think i don't think they'll score right i can't see it cuz like i said against australia like they didn't really create really clear cut chances against us. Like we nullified them a lot, and I know they didn't have Sam Kerr and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I I'm being positive, and hopefully we get a positive result. Well, that's what that's what we want to hear. Like because uh, you know so many times that in the past or in media, you you often hear, oh well, we'd be lucky to to get anything or scrape a draw or anything like that. So to hear you like and you know the squad probably better than anybody because you've been in and around so often. Um, you'll know what the team is capable more so than than anybody else, or you know, other than the staff itself. Um, so yeah, praying for a result uh, tomorrow. Uh, where are you going to be watching? Are you going to a watch party? Or are you just going to watch it at home? Uh, I haven't. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I no. I don't think I'll be able to go to a watch, watch party. I'm too nervous. I can't. Uh, I wouldn't be able for that. Um, I'll have to watch it on my own somewhere. Um, because uh, the other day I woke up. I was up at seven. And it was like the longest four hours towards the game. It was it was torture. But um yeah, I get I get quite nervous watching them. Same as the men's to be honest. But um yeah, I'll I'll have my Irish jersey on and I'll be uh, screaming at the telly. You'll be watching it from behind the couch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, well, listen, uh, Neve. I just want to say a huge thanks for coming on. I kept you a bit longer than I probably said I would, so sorry about that. Um, it's been great no having you. Um, and, yeah, um, I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more from you later on in the summer. Um, but uh, thanks very much for your time. Come on, you girls in green. 
no worries thanks a million come on you girls and great <laughs> guys uh, if you are watching this video on youtube don't forget to give uh, the video a like don't forget to subscribe as well and you can follow Neve at uh, Neve Farrelly on her socials so you can check her out there and uh, yeah, don't forget to uh, stay involved. Come on you girls in green.